Today, I'm going to be reviewing an MTH Premier SD24. So I wanted to give you guys a brief history of this locomotive. It was built by EMD between July of 1958 and March of 1963. It had a V16 turbocharged uh, engine that produced 2400 horsepower. That was a lot of horsepower back then. Um, and they built 224 units, 45 of which were cabless B units ordered by the Union Pacific and the Union Pacific ordered 30 A units numbered 400 to 429. So this locomotive was released in uh, MTH's uh, 2020 Volume 2 catalog. It was their last catalog. And the reason why I bought this locomotive was that um, I have a U50 and a U30 uh, C, a U50 C and a U30 C in Union Pacific colors and I thought this would be an excellent engine to run with those engines to be able to lash it up with those engines and I like the look of this engine I like the uh, three axle trucks uh, this looks a lot like a uh, GP7 or GP9 with the uh, high hood um, so I think this engine adds uh, a different look um, it's definitely un a unique looking engine um, compared to my other engines that I have, so I uh, figured this would be a great addition. An interesting story happened with this locomotive. So I received it back in May, uh, like two months ago, and I placed it on the tracks, and as soon as I applied power to the tracks with my Z4000, it was causing a short. I checked all the switches, all the switches were correct. The, uh, it was set to three rail, it was set to DCS, uh, but to no avail, I tried it on both loops. It was both causing a short on both loops. So I called MTH and I was on hold for about 10 minutes with their customer service and then it bumped me to voicemail. So I called Charles Rowe where I ordered this engine and I talked to the gentleman there. He made a phone call to MTH and he informed me that they were at the time were in the process of moving and that their customer service was closed they weren't taking any calls and to wait like two weeks so I waited another three weeks and I called MTH because I didn't hear anything and um, this time I didn't even get the option for customer service so this started to really worry me I ended up calling um, a technician here in the area where I live, an MTH technician, and he told me that parts were really difficult to come by and that what I should do is try to return this locomotive and get my money back from Charles Rowe. So I called Charles Rowe and they said, okay, you can bring this in and get a store credit. So I brought it into the store and they told me that I could get a store credit, but I couldn't apply it to uh, a future order. I have a lot of trains on pre-order with Charles Rowe, and um, so I figured I could, there's, a, there's an engine that I'll be getting here pretty soon. I'm really excited for it. I won't give you guys the details, but you're going to have to look out for it. So I figured I could apply returning this engine towards that locomotive, and they would give me a gift card, but they said that I had to apply it towards something that was in the store. So I had to buy something in the store and use the credit of this locomotive towards it. And I didn't really see anything until I actually saw another one of these SD24s on the shelf. So I told them that, and they ended up letting me swap this out for a new locomotive. So they took the bad one and gave me this one. So uh, it's been uh, kind of a long story. Uh, it's been over two months, but finally it got resolved, and uh, I'm happy with this engine. So this engine weighs uh, 4 pounds, 11 ounces, and it is 16 and a half inches in length, coupler, coupler to coupler. 
The detail is nice on this locomotive. Uh, you've got the uh, bell hanging in the front, the very front of the engine, which kind of uh, protrudes out of the roof, which is interesting. It's got some nice handrails, some nice uh, separately applied ladders in the front, and a chain across the walkway. And um, the roof has some interesting detail with some tanks up top over here. And this is the where the smoke comes out. You've got some fans here and the horn in the back. One of the um, tough things about this locomotive is the switch location. So all the switches are located underneath the car body and they're kind of difficult to get to. You have to kind of turn the trucks to be able to get access to the uh, to the switches. Um, be nice if they would have been located at the top where you can take a panel, the panel off the roof and have access to the switches. Another nice uh, thing about this locomotive is that it has a flashing beacon on the top of the cab. Uh, Union Pacific had these a lot on their locomotives and so that's a nice uh, added touch. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this around the layout so you can see it in action.
Okay, so that concludes it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, I'm going to be having a lot of fun with this engine, being able to lash it up with my U50 and U30. Uh, so until next time, everybody stay safe and uh, keep looking out for my videos. Take care.